Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the new Bajaj Freedom. The motorcycle that's created quite a buzz online of late and of course it is creating quite a stir in the 125cc commuter motorcycle space primarily because this is the world's first motorcycle that actually runs on compressed natural gas. You heard that right, CNG. There's a 2kg tank for that CNG storage just here under the seat and you also have a 2-litre tank right here. It does run on two types of fuel and of course it promises to take sustainable mobility to a different level altogether. Exactly how effective is it out on the road? We are about to find out. Now Bajaj said they do it and they finally done it. A motorcycle that runs on CNG. Now I must admit that at first I thought since this was going to be a commuter bike that's built to a cost, easy to maintain, heavily focused on mileage, basically utilitarian and mainly targeted at the masses who do a lot of daily up and down travel. Like most 125cc commuter class bikes, this one was going to be a bare bones boring bike as well. But when they whipped off the covers of the Freedom, well, it turns out it was anything but that. Up front you get an LED headlight, a front disc brake and even some Bluetooth connectivity to answer calls and for some SMS alerts with the top spec model. The lower model shed the disc brake, LED headlamp and the Bluetooth function and instead feature a drum brake and halogen headlamp. You have chunky looking Eurogrip tyres on the 17 inch front and 16 inch rear. The smaller rear wheel is on account of it Bajaj not wanting to compromise on suspension travel. There are these plastic panels on the front fork which add some meat to the front end and it seems to board rather well with the slightly bulbous tank section which houses the 2 litres of petrol on the right hand side and the airbox on the left. Pop open the fuel lid and you'll see that both the petrol and CNG fueling caps are neatly integrated under there. Atop the handlebar with its simplistic but durable feeling switch gear is the neatly laid out reverse LCD display that shows off the time, speed, gear position, trip with consumption readings and CNG fuel level reading. But this a fuel level reading goes blank when you switch to petrol. There are also indicator lights that sit atop that show you what fuel the engine is running on as well. Moving behind, you have a rather long but flat 785mm bench seat which could, although not ideal or safe, seat 3 up easily. Beneath the seat you have the 2kg tank nestled within the trellis frame which acts as a protective cage for this tank. The single 125cc engine is a stress member in this ordeal and is horizontally laid out to optimize space. There's a belly pan which adds to the rugged appearance of the bike as well. At the rear of the motorcycle there are a couple of bolts near the tail lamp that allow you to dismantle the entire tail section and allow you to service or replace the CNG tank when unscrewed. Now one of the outstanding bits about the Freedom has to be the design. I mean, not only is its style really nice, but then again, when you think, okay, 1,50,000 rupees on road for this top end variant, well, you think, okay, fine, Bajaj may have cut some corners somewhere, which they have in fact, but then it really doesn't go to show because all the work that has been done on this motorcycle has been thoughtfully executed and the fit and finish level is really, really good. It's top notch on this one and feels like a very well put together motorcycle. So, a commuter motorcycle that looks neat and tidy is always a good thing, right? But as always, the defining points of any commuter motorcycle are its rate of running efficiency and the level of ride comfort it provides. Now, this would be the first time I'd be filling up any vehicle with CNG and the first time the pump attendants would be filling up a CNG powered motorcycle, let alone actually seeing one. So, it was a new and exciting experience for everyone involved. Yeah, so we've been riding the Bajaj Freedom for around 98 kilometers now in the city and uh, yesterday when we tanked up completely, although it's a 2 kg tank, well, it just managed to fill around 1.82 kgs of CNG in the tank completely because, well, it depends on the pressure at the pump. So, yes, we've been running around the city for around 98 kilometers now and it's time to fill up and get an estimate of what the mileage figure is all about. Now considering a speedo and trip error, we estimate the mileage to be around 75 to 80 kilometers per kg of compressed natural gas. And we estimate that number to rise while riding efficiently out on the highway. Thankfully, everyone was so fascinated and curious seeing the new CNG Bajaj bike that they all let me skip the line and tank up right away. Not so sure if this would be the case in the months to come when the bike has been around for a while and people are used to seeing them about the place. So there's the question about that. Now that we have tanked up the Bajaj Freedom once again, we have a 
indication of what the mileage figure is all about, at least as far as the city is concerned, because we have been running around in the city a couple of days, and yep, now it has given them back a mileage of around 75 kilometers per kg, and that is really impressive because if you consider the fact that if you have a 125cc IC motorcycle, you can expect a mileage figure of around 50 to 60, uh, depending on how you ride. But then again, this one 75 on a single uh, on a single kg, and that too, the cost of one kg of CNG is around 73 and a half rupees. So yes, all things considering, very impressed by the mileage figure of the Bajaj Freedom. And out on the highway, well, that number is just going to rise. While testing for petrol efficiency, we saw that the Freedom ran 50 kilometers to a litre of petrol. So it would be safe to assume that this bike is capable of running over 250 kilometers after combining the CNG and petrol average figures. Now, the main difference here is the cost of petrol and CNG. Now, petrol currently costs rupees 103.44 per litre in Mumbai and rupees 73.5 per kg of CNG. So if you compare the Freedom to a regular IC 125cc commuter motorcycle, which would give you around 50 kilometers per liter, well, you'd spend around 517 rupees to cover 250 kilometers. Whereas with the Freedom, you'd technically be spending about rupees 147 on two kgs of CNG and around 206.8 on petrol to cover the same distance before running both tanks dry. So theoretically, you'd save around 163 rupees every 250 kilometers, which may not seem like a world-breaking number at first, but once you add it up over the years and kilometers that you'll be riding this one around, the amount of money that you'll end up saving is pretty substantial. So from our quick fuel efficiency test, we see that the Freedom is in fact the most fuel efficient 125cc motorcycle there ever was. So surely an engine of this efficiency must lack power, right? Well, the answer is a surprising and resounding no, and that's considering the motorcycle's basic kilometer crunching, commuter focused standpoint, of course. This is the first time Bajaj have actually come out with a horizontal layout for their single cylinder engines, uh, and of course, it has mostly to do with the entire throttle body, the mapping, and of course, uh, the layout as far as spacing is concerned. So now, this engine makes around 9.5 PS of max power, 9.7 Nm of max torque, and obviously, there are different throttle maps. Uh, for your CNG and your petrols. Both maps are laid out to give you access to around the same amount of power. And out here, on the road, at least at sea level, I didn't really feel a shortage of power at any point. Not even on the inclines that we came across in the city. There is a bit more punch in petrol mode though, and the throttle just feels a little more responsive. And when things were going a little too slow up in CNG mode, well, a quick switch to petrol mode added some more pep in this freedom step. You can start off in either petrol or CNG modes, it doesn't really matter which. And you can also switch between fuels at any point on the go, at the flip of a switch. There's also a small hiccup from the engine when you switch between fuels before it begins to run nice and smooth again. Now this engine, it isn't very refined at idle, but it runs nice and smooth once you set off. It uses different size injectors for CNG and petrol, with the CNG injector being slightly larger. The Freedom also uses the cooling jets of a 200cc motor to cope with the burning of petrol and CNG, which is a dry fuel. The motor is very tractable, and you can even pull away from low speeds from as low as 25 km per in 5th without the engine knocking in dismay. There is a nice thrummy exhaust note all throughout as well. Now the Freedom, well it wasn't built to be a speed demon and it will take its own sweet time to get you to 100 km per hour once you have the time and space that is. Out on the highway it hits a sweet spot at an indicated 55 km per hour which is acceptable all things considered. Now one of the main concerns of the Freedom would have to be the aspect of its safety. Is it really all that safe to ride around town while literally sitting on a full tank of CNG? Well Bajaj seems very confident that it actually is to bring about the element of safety because after all once you stride the freedom you are going to be roaming around town with a cng tank under your posterior now that of course is going to be alarming for many people but then again bajaj have shown us that they have taken extreme measures to make sure that the cng tank and of course you remain safe at all times now we have seen it in the presentation they have ridden a multi-axle truck over this bike and nothing has happened and that's primarily because well 
the bike has been designed to keep things safe. The trellis frame that you see out here, well, it is meant to encapsulate that kind of the CNG tank and keep it safe. And of course, while you're on the road and you feel there's something wrong with the CNG unit, it's not performing the way it should, well, you always have the option of shutting off the valve completely. There's a small blue valve located just under the tank and you can shut the CNG tank from functioning at all. So it just knocks it off and you can run the bike completely on petrol after that. So that's a good element about safety. All right, so another really nice thing I like about the Freedom is the fact that it is a very nice, comfortable motorcycle to ride even over long stints in the saddle because although you don't have adjustable suspension up front, the rear, well, you do have preload adjustment, five steps of it. But then again, the seat, the way it's all configured, uh, even the rider triangle, very straightforward, no nonsense. It is a commuter motorcycle at the end of the day, not at all a fuss. The Freedom weighs in at 149 kg, with a full tank of CNG contributing to around 17 kg of that number. It feels nice and light for the city and weighs up just about alright on the highway too. But what's better is this motorcycle seat, which gives you all the room you need to move around and make yourself comfy on long stints in the saddle. It's just so easy to chuck this one about in the city on a daily basis. It's simple but very to the point. It gives you just what you'd expect from a 125cc commuter bike perspective and then some, for sure. But just as with most first time evers, the Freedom does have its share of shortcomings. The gearbox needs to be improved because I hit a number of false neutrals in the higher gears on multiple occasions. Then there's the question of the LED headlight which is pretty much useless in the rain apart from indicating your presence to oncoming traffic. And the fueling in CNG mode needs some fine tuning because there are some times where you try to pull away from a signal and the motor just appears to be struggling trying to grab for some fuel to burn and it's just left there blocking traffic with no power to pull away. Well, that's a bit annoying. Now, although there's no option of ABS throughout the variants, which some might see as an issue, I was really happy with the performance of the tyres and the brakes on the Freedom. Now, the Bajaj Freedom was built to do one thing and that is be the most efficient 125cc commuter there ever was. And that's what this motorcycle really is in reality because you have the option of switching between CNG and petrol. Now, CNG you have, uh, that will give you a good range of around 75 kilometers per kg per CNG and that will set you back by around, what, 73 and a half rupees currently in Bombay, the price of CNG per kg. And then you have the option of uh, shifting over to petrol if you do not come across a CNG tank or a petrol, uh, uh, a fuel bunk of that sort. Now, that on its own will give you a good 50 kilometers per litre if you are riding efficiently once again. Now, that on its own is phenomenal because Bajaj have really done an outstanding job with this configuration, with the way this motorcycle is set up because it doesn't end just at efficiency. The way this motorcycle is set up in terms of fit and finish levels, uh, the ergonomics, the seat, it's all thoroughly thought through and well executed and that's what this, uh, what Bajaj deserve a good pat on the back for. One and a half lakh rupees on road, well this makes a very convincing package and if you are in the market for a 125cc commuter, this should very well be the motorcycle that you should be looking at. Of course, there are a couple of issues that Bajaj will have to iron out which we are sure they are going to manage in the next couple of months. But this one for a commuter motorcycle is really outstanding and as far as uh, sustainable mobility goes, Bajaj have really upped the game with this one.